Hi everyone, my name is Cathy Su and I'm from the Technical University of Denmark and I work in the Wind and Energy Systems Department. In this video, you will have an introduction to the HVDC technology. The first learning objective of this video is about why is HVDC needed. And in this section, you will learn several benefits of the HVDC technology. And in the second section, you will learn about how does it work. And finally, I will give you one use case as an example. So first of all, in today's transmission system, every day about 10% of the energy, electricity energy, is lost in the transmission lines and all the transmission network around the world. And out of this 10%, uh, the main components of these losses are the transformers, uh, the overhead lines, and the cables and other components. So, why is that? Imagine this is a simplified model of an AC cable. And this is how the current, the electricity current, runs through the cable. And you can see the magnitude changes all the time. And due to this changing nature of the AC current, there is a lot of heat losses as well as reactive power losses due to the nature of the AC current. Compared to the AC transmission, the DC current is a lot simplified. And due to this uh, simplified waveform of the DC current, the heat loss in the DC transmission is much lower. And the DC transmission allows longer distance for underground cable and undersea cable before you have to inject the significant amount of reactive power into the system. And it also allows the connection of two or even more uh, unsynchronized grids. And this is very useful when you have to connect two countries. One is running at uh, 50 hertz and the second one is at 60 hertz. It can also be used as a STATCOM and ACVC solution because uh, HVDC solution can provide reactive power to either the sending end or the receiving end of the network. It requires smaller footprint. This is because in HVDC solution, you don't require a significant amount of reactive power. So therefore, you don't uh, need the reactive uh, power components in the substation and also you wouldn't need a large amount of uh, filters in your substation. And it requires shorter cables because in the normal AC transmission, you would at least uh, require either a three uh, times of single core cable or a one, cab one large cable with three cores. And in the HVDC cable, you can see uh, we normally needed uh, one or two cables. So, what is the basic concept of HVDC? And this is an example of an offshore wind farm. So first of all, we have an offshore wind farm and the power output from each turbine uh, in today's standard is normally connected via 66 kV medium voltage cable and runs through this transformer and the voltage can be lifted up to 50, 500 kV and then it will go through this uh, what we call VSC valves and these two components, the transformer and the VSC valves are the main components, the two key elements of what we call on offshore converter station. 
and then we could run these uh, energy through a DC undersea cable. Typically, these uh, cables can connect a distance about uh, 200 kilometer or uh, 500 kilometer, depends on how far the offshore wind farm is away from the shore. And likewise, we will connect this cable to another uh, VSC valves. And what this valve does is that it converts the DC power into AC. And then lower the voltage to the level that can be connected to the local community. Again, the valves and the transformer are the two key elements of a onshore converter station. There are many use cases of HVDC, but in principle, they can all be categorized into two categories. So the first one is when you transmit large amount of energy over a long distance, this is also called point-to-point -point transmission. So you can have a point-to-point -point transmission uh, on land. So when you have a large country like uh, uh, Brazil, uh, the US or China, where the location of the power plant is quite far from the load center. Or you can have a offshore, a large offshore wind farm that is very far from the shore. So in this case, it's also a point to point large amount of energy transmission. The use case number two is when you connect two regions, either two separate regions within the same country or two different countries and these regions or countries are not electrically synchronized. This is what we call back-to-back uh, -back application. Uh, the meaning of back-to-back uh, -back is that the distance between the two valves are almost zero. They can be put in the same building. So that's why it's also called a back-to-back -back solution. And the first case is called point-to-point -point transmission. This example is the Viking link between Denmark and the UK. As you can see here, the, the, the two cables, the length of the cables are around 800 kilometers. And um, the way it works is that, let's say, from the Denmark end, the AC power from the 400 kV is increased around the 500 kV. And then from this VSC converter, it's converted from AC to DC. And then the power is transmitted to the other end. And here, this valve will take the energy and convert it from DC back to AC, and then again convert the voltage back to 400 kV AC, which is ready to be integrated in the British network. And these four symbols means the breaker, the circuit breaker, around these four locations are currently at the open status, meaning the current will not flow at these black lines. The green lines are the root of the current. Now, if we open these four circuit breakers, so this means now we have only half of the scheme available. With the switching of the circuit breakers, you can see how the two different operation modes can be switched from one to another. 
control modes. In the HVDC application, we can control the AC voltage at this side of the transformer and the reactive power that we inject into the AC network. We also control the DC voltage and the active power that are being transmitted between the two ends. And other control modes include frequency control and power factor control. So to summarize, in this video, you have learned why an HVDC is needed and how does it work. And you have seen also one use case of a real example of a HVDC application. If you want to learn more knowledge about HVDC, you can find more information and contacts under this website. Thank you very much.